Okay, now the question remains when the lambda executes its two life cycle, lytic or lysogenic, how to figure it out, right? Now, usually it depends on two major factors. One is the nutritional status of the host cell and second one is the multiplicity of infection or MOI. Now, in the first thing which is nutritional status of the host cell, the nutrient rich medium. If there is a nutrient rich medium and the high concentration of FTSH protease present there, it can cleave the C2 protein and then finally it can turn into the lytic phase. Right? For example, if you present it in the nutrient poor medium, there will be low concentration of FTSH protease and in this case the accumulation of C2 protein start to emerge and it will convert into the lysogenic cycle. So more nutrition, lytic cycle, less nutrition, lysogenic cycle. Second thing is the multiplicity of infection. Now, if there is a high multiplicity of infection, it will be lysogenic cycle. If it is low multiplicity of infection, it will be lytic cycle. Now, the multiplicity of infection is termed as the number of infectious virus particles divided by the total number of target cells present in a defined space. Now, if the total number of target cells present in the defined space is very, very less, in those cases, they always try to convert into the lysogenic cycle. But if the first particles are pretty, uh, they are less than the host cell, usually they follow the lytic cycle. Because that's the strategy. If there is less bacteria and more phage, and, and if they start to kill all the phage, bacteria, then they won't be having any host cell to survive. Because bacteria always require host cell for their living. Right? So they, want, they, they never want the host cell to be degraded all the time. So if there is adequate number of host cells, only in those cases they will kill uh, the host cell by the lytic cycle. Right? That's the multiplicity of infection is telling us. Okay. So that's it and I hope that's helping you. Thank you.